Welcome back to this course Fundamentals, on Compu Fundamentals of Computer Architecture. In this module I will extend the canonical pipeline with multi-cycle operations. Operations that require more than one execution cycle. First the objectives of this module. After this module I expect you to be able to extend the canonical five-stage MIPS pipeline with multi-cycle operations, operations that take more than a single cycle to execute. Second, you should be able to identify the potential hazards in longer pipelines and present solutions to these hazards. Third, you should be able to describe the pipeline of the MIPS R4K processor. Finally, but this is the objective of the next lesson, you will be able to optimize the code that should be executed on a particular pipeline organization using techniques such as instruction scheduling and loop enrolling. As usual, I inform you of the source this lesson is based on so that you can check the material presented to you. This lesson is based on appendices C5 and C6 of the 5th edition of the textbook Computer Architecture A Quantitative Approach by John Hennessy and David Patterson. The instructions we have discussed so far all execute in a single cycle. Unfortunately, not all instructions can be executed in one cycle if you want to keep the cycle time short. For example, multiplication, division and floating point operations typically do not execute in a single cycle. To illustrate this, this table here shows the latencies of some instructions on the MIPS R10K microprocessors. Integer instructions such as add and subtract and logical operations all have a latency of one cycle, meaning that they execute in a single cycle. Integer multiplication, however, requires five or even six cycles to execute. The exact latency depends on the next instruction. A double word multiplication, demult, is even worse and requires 9 or 10 cycles to execute. Even worse still is the integer division, which takes 34 or 35 cycles. Relatively simple floating point instructions, on the other hand, such as add, subtract, absolute and multiply, have a latency of 2 cycles, while divide single takes 12 cycles and divide double requires 19 cycles. So we must handle multi-cycle operations in one way or another. As we will see in this lesson, we can do so by introducing several execution pipelines, one for every type of functional unit. We will also show that multiple operations can be executing at the same time or, which basically means the same thing, that there can be multiple outstanding operations. First, let's see how we can support multiple functional units. First, we have the instruction fetch stage, as before. Then we have the decode stage, also as in the canonical pipeline. Thereafter, we don't have a single integer unit, as in the canonical pipeline, but four separate functional units. The main unit that executes loads and stores, integer operations and branches indicated by x, a floating point integer multiplier indicated in this figure by m, a floating point adder that executes floating point addition, subtractions and conversions indicated by a, and then and a, a floating point integer divider indicated by diff. Then we have the MEM stage as before and finally there is the write back stage as in the canonical pipeline. We see that moving an instruction from the instruction decode stage to the functional unit that will execute the instruction is not as straightforward as before. For this reason the dispatching or issuing of the instruction from the decode stage to the appropriate functional unit is often called the issue step and sometimes it is even a separate pipeline stage or stages. To support multi-cycle operations, we need to modify our canonical pipeline as follows. Here's our original five-stage pipeline with only one integer unit and consisting of the stages fetch, decode, x, mem and write back. 
To support multiplication, we add another pipeline like this. I assume that a multiplication takes six cycles and that it can be pipelined. Therefore, the execution of multiplication operations consists of six pipeline stages numbered M1 to M6. Similarly, to support floating point additions, we add another set of parallel pipeline stages, A1 to A4. Since there are four pipeline stages, it follows that we assume that a floating point addition requires four execution stages. Furthermore, a floating point addition, like a multiplication, can be pipelined, which is indicated in this figure by the arrows between the pipeline stages. Finally, divisions are executed on this part of the data path by the floating point divider. Unlike floating point multiplication and addition, however, division is not pipelined. This is indicated in this figure by placing no arrow between the boxes corresponding to cycles. Furthermore, I will assume that a division takes 25 cycles. If there are multiple execution pipelines of different length, we should define the latency and initiation interval of each functional unit. According to the textbook, the latency is defined as the number of cycles that must elapse between an instruction that produces a result and an instruction that consumes or uses the result. Also according to the textbook, the initiation or repeat interval is defined as the number of cycles that must elapse between issuing two instructions of the same kind. In other words, <clears throat> between two instructions that are executed on the same functional unit. In the remainder of this lesson, I will assume the latencies and initiation intervals shown in this table. Integer ALU operations have a latency of zero, since the result can be used the next cycle due to forwarding. The initiation interval is one, however since we cannot issue two ALU operations in a single cycle. An initiation interval of less than one is possible in a processor organization that issues multiple instructions per cycle. Such processor organization will be discussed later in this specialization. Integer and floating point loads have a latency of one cycle due to the load use data hazards since the data loaded is available only after the MEM stage. A floating point addition has a latency of three cycles. Even though a floating point addition requires four execution stages, only three cycles are needed between the floating point add and the instruction that uses its result. Furthermore, because the floating point adder is pipeline, its initiation interval is one, because the next floating point addition can be issued in the next cycle. For the same reason, the latency of a floating point multiplier is 5 and its initiation interval is 1. The divider, on the other hand, is not pipelined. For this reason, and because it requires 25 execution cycles, its initiation interval is 25. In general, if an operation requires n execution cycles, its latency is n minus 1. Furthermore, if it is pipelined, its in initiation interval is 1. And if it's not pipelined, its initiation interval is equal to n. Let's look in more detail at the latency and initiation interval of a floating point add. We have assumed that a floating point add can be pipelined and requires four execution cycles corresponding to the stages A1 to A4. Then its latency is 3, as this figure illustrates. We have an add double that writes to register F0 and a subtract double that uses F0. Then the subtract incurs three stall cycles, wait cycles, as indicated by the crossed boxes in this figure. On the other hand, its initiation interval is 1, as this figure shows. The instructions executed on the floating point adder are independent and because the floating point adder is pipelined, the next instruction can be issued to it in the next cycle. This completes this lesson. Thanks for watching. In the next lesson, I will describe some challenges for longer pipelines. Stay tuned.